All right, everybody, it's time to get started. Well, I have asked Mr. Chad Riley. How many of you know Chad? <laughs> I, really, I really wanted him to speak on this subject. Chad is the, you know, everybody thinks I'm a, I'm a researcher. This guy is the researcher of researchers. And uh, we are blessed now that Chad is actually a member of Fire and Grace Church. They moved to Alabama. He and his wife, Sarah. And we love having them around. And uh, actually, we're going to be, we've been working on, we've had some interruptions and problems working on a documentary. We're going to, he's going to film a, a documentary of my 2022 campaign for governor. And uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. So we're going to be working on that and some other things. But uh, I've asked him to come speak on MK Ultra uh, because... We need to understand, I think some of you may know a little bit about it, some of you may know nothing about it. Uh, Chad knows a lot about it, and uh, it's a very important thing because we are seeing it actually in society everywhere, the, uh, the issues of mind control. They're actually now even learning how to use different frequencies to transmit thoughts uh, to your mind. and. The issue of the world using both, both, well, Satan using both spiritual and technological weapons to try to manipulate your thoughts and your mind. And you need to really get your mind under control and your mind full of the Word of God. And you need to understand that the government has been working on this for decades upon decades, and they are perfecting it. And uh, sometimes, actually, I've had to pray against... Uh, technology that's attacking me and I might share more of that later but um, those attacks can be pretty severe and they're not the same as dealing with a demon or a, a, you know a astral projection or anything like that it gets it gets pretty intense in fact I got attacked by a microwave weapon one time and I'm gonna tell you it is not pleasant to feel like you're being cooked from the inside out um, and they got all kind of weapons now. And that, and that attack did not stop until the Lord told me, you're being hit by a microwave weapon and you need to ask your wife. I was so weak at that point, it was about two hours into it, um, that I couldn't even pray for myself. And the Lord just said, tell your wife to pray for, against a microwave weapon. And when she did, it all stopped. And I mean, I was shaking, I was cooking. My kidneys hurt for like two or three days. And it was because I just had a prophetic dream about Obama doing something. And he was in office at the time. And that actually that word, that dream went viral. And then I got attacked. It was, it was a real attack. So there's technology that's attacking us. And uh, it's just we need to understand a lot of these shootings, these mass shootings, pretty much all of them, those people are being mind controlled and manipulated to do what they are doing. So anyway, without further ado, Chad Riley. How's everybody doing today? It's good to see all of y'all here. I'm grateful that all y'all could make it out here. This is a timeline right here showing from the days of Jared when the 200 fallen angels talking about in Genesis 6 and Book of Enoch ruled almost 1,300 years. So it's pivotal to understand that how, how long they were here and how much damage they did. With that said, this all started with the fallen angels who descended in the days of Jared and taught their children and humanity things that we were not supposed to know. Taught sorcery, taught women how to abort their children. Thou hast seen what Azazel has done how he has taught every species of iniquity upon the earth. Shemyaza also has taught sorcery. They have gone together to the daughters of men and have lain with them. The women likewise have brought forth giants. This is Enoch 9, 5 through 8. Now I know a lot of uh, pastors out there, they don't like the book of Enoch, most churches. But um, I will say this, Jesus quoted from the book of Enoch. So did James and so did Jude, and they were both the half-brothers of Jesus. 
Jude, he quoted an entire paragraph verbatim. And when they found Enoch 1 and the Dead Sea Scrolls, it matched up word for word with the copy they had translated in the 1700s out of the Ethiopian Bible. So, plus not to mention Jude was under the Holy Spirit when he wrote his epistle. So, can't dance around that one either. The word sorcery is derived from the Greek word pharmakia, which we get the word pharmaceutical and means administering the use of drugs, poisoning, and also deals with magical arts in connection with idolatry. So this also ties in a lot with what Pastor Dean is going to be talking about when it gets into the Jesuits and a lot of this stuff with the Catholic Church. I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with Aldous Huxley. Yeah. In a speech that he gave titled The Ultimate Revolution in 1962, he made the following quote. There will be in the next generation or so a pharmacological method of making people love their servitude and producing dictatorship without tears, so to speak, producing a kind of painless concentration camp for the entire societies so that people will in fact have their liberties taken away from them, but will rather enjoy it, end quote. Keep in mind that his brother was the one who coined the phrase transhumanism in his book, New Bottles and New Wine. So I'm pretty sure these people were dealing with entities that were feeding them lots of information of things to come. So MK Ultra, it's more mind control. It's not just mind control. It's, it, it, it has to do with total dominance, control over everything, society, individuals, your, you know, everything. And the CIA, they delved into all sorts of dark arts, witchcraft, seances, and channeling sessions. In my film, Skinwalkers and Stranger Things of the Unseen Realm, I, I get into a lot of that. That um, There was a, a part of the MK Ultra program called MK Often, and this uh, branch specifically dealt with the dark arts. They um, were in touch with the witch by the name of Sybil Leek, and Sybil Leek was so entrenched in the occult, she knew of all the covens all over the world. This is why the CIA was operating with her. Um, Aleister Crowley used to visit her when she was nine years old and used to read poetry to her. And it wasn't just people like Aleister Crowley, we're talking people like H.G. Wells, Lawrence of Arabia, all sorts of people used to come and visit her and her family. So. Now the uh, trauma-based mind control, they prefer to use it on children, people that come out of uh, satanic ritual abuse or just uh, abuse period. But that's where all of this comes from. This is all something that was taught by the fallen angels. And this is basic satanic ritual abuse is what MK Ultra is. This is where they got all their techniques that they use. Even Scientology and other uh, cults out there, they use the exact same base pattern for a lot of this. And I'm gonna play a clip here for you. It's gonna explain a little bit of this. Do you think that the CIA and military intelligence agencies and the FBI have used the emergency provisions, both in law and by emergency agency, to have contingency plans which threaten the liberty of American citizens? The United States government has perfected a technological capability. At the same time, that capability at any time could be turned around on the American people. There would be no place to hide. The technological capacity that the intelligence community has given the government could enable it to impose total tyranny. After the Allied victory in Europe of World War II on May 8, 1945, the Office of Strategic Services, the intelligence agency formed during World War II, conducted Operation Paperclip, a program in which over 1,500 Nazi German scientists, technicians, and engineers were smuggled into the United States. President Truman's order concerning Operation Paperclip expressly excluded anyone even remotely associated with the Nazi party. However, 
The Joint Intelligence Objectives Agency, a subcommittee of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, expunged from public record all Nazi party affiliations in regards to the German scientists. From this exodus of evil sprung a variety of mind control operations. The Central Intelligence Agency succeeded the Office of Strategic Services during World War II as a result of the National Security Act of 1947, which granted the CIA no police or law enforcement functions either at home or abroad to coordinate secret espionage activities against the Axis powers for the branches of the United States Armed Forces. Secretly, Project Chatter was conducted in order to identify agents synthetic and natural that could enhance interrogation. Project Bluebird experimented with the possibility of using humans as mind-controlled warfare agents. CIA Director Alan Dulles was quoted as complaining that they did not have enough human guinea pigs to try these extraordinary techniques. Thus, officially, the MKUltra project was sanctioned in 1953. The project received over 25 million and involved hundreds of experiments on human subjects at 80 different institutions. I give the CIA a total credit for sponsoring and initiating the entire consciousness movement, counterculture events of the 1960s. Human experimentation on the U.S. population finally creeped into the public eye when in the summer of 1975, Congressional Church Committee reports revealed to the public for the first time that the CIA and the Department of Defense had conducted experiments on both unwitting and cognizant human subjects as part of a huge program to control human behavior through the use of psychoactive drugs. The public wasn't told anything about the real aims and objectives of the CIA's, really they call it a mind control research program, but it was really just a control research program. Mind, behavior, individual, society, global. The technocratic, cybernetic New World Order that's unfolding all around us right now has always been about total world domination. And it connects to every other conspiracy you can possibly think of. And that very much includes Agenda 21. Yeah, this, uh, I, get it, I get into this pretty deep in the film that I've recently put out. Um, the whole thing about Timothy Leary, who you all saw there, I don't, I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with Timothy Leary. He was the very famous professor back in the day that used to say, turn on, tune in, and drop out. So, um, yeah, the, um, they were feeding the professors at colleges as well as uh, mental institutions and different things. They were feeding them the LSD, and they were doing this deliberately. They needed a larger test pool of subjects and they were causing people to open doors by taking these drugs. They thought they were just just expanding their horizon, but they were opening doors. And this bled into the whole Laurel Canyon. I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with the Los Angeles area. Okay, so if you're familiar with the Los Angeles area, y'all are aware of Laurel Canyon. Well, that was the whole area where like the Beatles, the Monkees, all these, the most famous musicians that you can think of, they were all congregated in this area and they were all doing LSD. And what's very fascinating about that area is because everybody knows that Los Angeles is known as the city of angels. Well, I believe that, but it's a city of fallen angels. And the, another interesting tidbit, there is a lizard city that they uncovered out there in the 1930s. Y'all can go on Google and you can type in lizard city in Los Angeles Times and you can find the articles but they had a massive underground city that these supposed lizard city, um, even the Native Americans knew about it and they talked about it quite frequently. So I find it very fascinating. That's barely seven miles away from Laurel Canyon in part of Los Angeles. So I think there's something to that, these charged areas. And uh, how many of y'all remember the 1960s sign off that they used to play on the airwaves whenever the, the channels would go off the air, they would play the national anthem. Were y'all aware that they had subliminal messages in there that come straight out of the 1980s movie, John Carpenter's They Live, talking about obey, consume, do not question authority, obey government. Let's take a look at that. I think y'all need to see it for your own eyes. Some of you may not remember this, but back in August 2013, I put up a report on a national anthem sign-off that had subliminal messages in it that look like the inspiration for the 1980s John Carpenter movie, They Live. Take a look. Our national anthem. <laughs> Yeah. 
you see the letters change at the bottom? Let's watch it again in even slower frame by frame motion. So as you just witnessed with your own eyes, we are living in the movie They Live. And um, we've been living in this matrix for a very, very long time. So since they've been here since the beginning, they've uh, infiltrated everything and uh, MK Ultra is all around us at all times. It's like the movie 1984 or the book, you know, Big Brother is watching. He's always watching. And what Pastor Dean was talking about uh, a while ago about the microwaves attack and things like that is very real. Uh, they had perfected this back in the 1970s. Uh, it was called Project Pandora, where they could use microwave weapons and they could put people to sleep. They could put an entire city to sleep, and they actually did it in 2015. So... I'm going to play a clip here on Project Pandora to give you guys an idea of just exactly what all they're capable of. And like I said, this was back in 1975, I believe. Um, they could target a city that was 100 square miles from about 75 square kilometers away. Things like this paper that came out in December 2013, which had to do with the Russian MKUltra twin program that was going on where they talk about the biological effects of weak electromagnetic emissions and things like that. And in the paper itself, they note that in 1973, a Russian military unit 71592 established an installation radio sond, which sounds a lot like radio sond. They conducted pretests, and the positive results are reflected in the acts of tests of the military unit. And according to calculations in 1974, the generator radio sond can effectively treat, quote unquote, a city of 100 square kilometers plunging the inhabitants into a deep sleep at a distance of up to 55 kilometers away from the transmitter. They could put whole towns of people to sleep in the mid-70s. Like, it's something straight out of the movie Dark City. And this right here is what no one talks about. Pretty fascinating. And some of the people that were falling asleep in that city that you just saw there back in 2015, they went into comas. And some of them, even after they woke up, they went back to sleep and fell into a coma again. So that's how powerful this technology is. In fact, this actually was discussed in the church committee hearing. And uh, 
Ted Kennedy almost had a heart attack when they started talking about it and quickly changed the subject. And it's not just that, it's also the vocabulary. I mean, the, y'all have noticed that over the last decade, especially over the last few years, how they keep changing the vocabulary and even changing terms in the dictionaries and things like that. All this stuff about deep fakes, cheap fakes, and so on. But I don't know how many of y'all are aware that uh, propaganda, um, you know, that, that's something that the military came up with. Edward Bernays, who was the nephew of Sigmund Freud, actually talked a little bit about that um, and came out. He actually worked during World War I and was the one that came up with the slogan, you know, uh, spreading democracy, which they still use today. Um, but that man, he was so evil and so vile and so wicked. You know, he was part of the Council of Foreign Relations, part of the creating of the UN. And uh, he bragged openly that he uh, worked with um, companies when he came back from the war, that he, would, he worked with a tobacco company. They needed more customers. So he talked a couple of women to going down to the Easter parade and walking down the street and had them get the press to be there while they were there, and they were openly smoking cigarettes, walking down the street, supposedly lighting torches of freedom. Feminism. And so he got a whole generation of women to start smoking, and they doubled their customer base. It was all about money. This is how they manipulate people. They manipulate you like pawns on a chessboard without you even realizing that they're they are pushing you around and moving you in ways you can't even understand. Now they perfected the pulse signals also, which as you all saw on Project, Propagand or, um, Project Pandora where they can put people to sleep. They can do far more with that. Um, they have uh, pulse signals that they have patents on. And so anything that you consume on any kind of a monitor, whether it be a TV monitor or even the monitor you have in your own hand. They, these things can send out pulse signals that can cause emotions to stir in you that normally wouldn't even be there. Have you noticed how people that consume certain news channels and certain news, how they just get triggered and get stirred up and the emotions? It might not even necessarily be their own emotions. Yeah, the term disinformation, that's actually a military term that uh, they have unleashed on us now. And I have a gentleman here that's going to give a little breakdown on that and talk about how a lot of the terminology that we are seeing today is actually military terms that they are now unleashing on the public. It started with disinformation in 2017. Actually, it started right after you know, Crimea in 2014 with this disinformation term. That was always a military term to describe enemy propaganda. You know, disinformation was not the sort of thing that a government would say its own citizens do. We would just call that ordinary course First Amendment protected discourse. But what, what so I started with, with you know, Russian disinformation using this kind of national security predicate in 2017. But by 2018, it became very evident that, um, that the, Russia, the Russiagate predicate could only go so far. So they rolled out and expanded it to misinformation and disinformation and saying, well, misinformation misinformation even if you even if it's not a lie but you make an innocent mistake that too is a threat to democracy uh, but then they quickly found that they were having a real problem see at the time they were still using this fact checker method uh, for for, uh, for flagging and they had a problem which is that a lot of the things that the government was trying to get the social media platforms to censor and government cutouts like the NGOs and civil society firms that the government paid were having trouble getting the platforms to take down enough misinformation because the fact checkers couldn't prove that half of what they were trying to take down was actually false so they created a new category in late 2018, early 2019 called malinformation. And this is basically what the lion's share of internet censorship now comprises. Malinformation is the idea that even if something is true, if it, if it ultimately leads people to a conclusion that uh, undermines public faith and confidence in a critical government initiative or undermines public faith and confidence in democratic institutions like the mainstream media, then that by itself 
uh, is, is essentially the same thing as mis and dis disinformation and should be yeah. treated as such by the platforms. This is a very, very dirty trick that basically operates the way a con game does. You know, a con game, the con there stands for confidence. And what they're doing is they're saying it undermines confidence when people are able to articulate true statements. In fact, one of the things that Just the News helped, uh, helped Foundation for Freedom Online break, uh, if you recall, about a, almost a year and a half ago now, was a DHS cybersecurity video you know, from the, from the CISA sub-agency, which said it was doing cybersecurity, but was in fact doing cyber censorship. An obscure little DHS uh, cybersecurity agency put out a six-minute YouTube video instructing a young cartoon protagonist named Susan to report her own Uncle Steve for disinformation on Facebook because Uncle Steve cited true CDC data to make the argument that COVID was no more fatal than the flu. So they were not arguing that Uncle Steve was wrong. He was citing CDC data, but it was malinformation because it had the effect of undermining public faith and confidence in the severity of the COVID pandemic. And they, they did this all over. They did this for mail-in ballots. They said even if a patch, a trove of uh, you know unmarked ballots or, or ballot trafficking operations were, were going on, simply to report on it would undermine public faith and confidence in the, in the use of mail-in ballots for the 2020 election. So it was censored under a government coerced terms of service violation policy called delegitimization, which meant anything true about election fraud, anything true about uh, you know the unreliability of mail-in ballots, anything true about scandals with early voting drop boxes, anything true about ballot, ta ballot tabulation issues on election day was still a terms of service violation, was still banned. And again, the government coerced this, this terms of service policy change through the, the Election Integrity Partnership, which was set up in partnership with DHS, uh, was all deemed to be you know uh, was all deemed to be mis dis malinformation because they lumped those three categories together. It's, they, they laundered it basically. And this is one of the reasons why they are so hot to trot to get rid of the internet archives. Because a lot of researchers like myself, we use the Wayback Machine to go back and catch them in a lot of their lies. Where news has been reported, it's been put out there, but then they disappear it down the rabbit hole on the internet. And the only way that you can verify that that was something that actually happened, you have to go back to what they call the Wayback Machine and look this information up and then print it out or do screenshots of it. So, they've been doing this for a very long time. In fact, I, I would uh, encourage you to start buying old dictionaries. If you could get one from every decade, that would be good. And you can see how they've been changing everything every couple of years. You go back and you see word, you can find out when a word disappeared or it's been changed and altered, how many times it's been altered. And Project Mockingbird was a part of MK Ultra, and also in that subliminal message y'all saw there, um, if y'all go back and watch it online, at the end there it said uh, Ultra and Naomi. That was Project MK Ultra and Project Naomi. And they just rubbed it right in your face for decades, and you had no idea the otherwise. Now, Mockingbird, even though it started out where they were doing things to children, which I touch on in my film, um, if any of y'all are familiar with the TV show Stranger Things, and have uh, y'all know about um, Project Montauk that took place out in Camp Hero, New York back in the early 80s. That's what they were doing is they were kidnapping children off the street and they were programming these children, but they were subjecting them to mind control, uh, trauma-based mind control. And like Russ Dizdar said in his book, The Black Awakening, they would shatter their minds in order to open them up to demonic possessions so that they could tap into these demonic powers. And that's where a lot of these techniques like remote viewing and so on were all birthed out of this. It came straight out of Scientology. Uh, this was created by two of the um, high top executives in the um, Scientology organization, Ingo Swan and Hal Puthoff. They were both OT7s. And keep in mind who created Scientology, that was L. Ron Hubbard who was an understudy of Aleister Crowley and worked with Jack Parsons on the Babylon working ritual. So again, it always ties into who's it associated with, where did this information come from? And that, that's, that's the crazy thing. The more you dig into Scientology, these people believe that they are like X-Men, that they are superhuman, they are gods. That is what they believe. Like Tom Cruise actually believes he's a god. And just to show you guys that MK Ultra 
or the um, Project Mockingbird is still alive and well today, and we are all, you know, we're all victims of it every day. I just want to play this clip right here, and this will drive that point home. Hi, I'm Fox San Antonio's Jessica Headley. And I'm Ryan Wolf. Our, Our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to, to serve, serve our, our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso Las Cruces communities. Eastern Iowa communities. Mid-Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS 4 News produces. But we are concerned about trouble and trying to be responsible. One-sided news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 Well, first off, we're not a democracy, we're a republic. Well, let's just establish that fact. But as y'all can see, Mockingbird in action is still alive and well today. And again, most people, it's why well, you got to be careful where you get your news from and you got to get it from multiple sources and do your own digging sometimes. You cannot trust these people. They, they are not our friends. They are not our allies. Now, as I draw this talk to a close, I want to bring your attention to Revelation 18.23, speaking of the fallen Babylon. The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. And the voice of a bride and bridegroom will never call out in you again. For your merchants were the great ones of the earth, became all the nations, were deceived by your sorcery. Now, we touched a little bit about the LSD, Laurel Canyon, and all that. Uh, that was the birth of a lot of the stuff. The, um, the Nazis were using a lot of mind control techniques with drugs, but... So was Aleister Crowley and a lot of the Satanists out there. And keep in mind, he was heavily influenced by um, John Dee, who worked under Queen Elizabeth. So these are all sorcerers, witches, Satanists. And all these techniques that we know of as satanic ritual abuse today, that was all morphed into all these um, different agencies, whether it be the Auburn, all, Oh, goodness, Auburn, stumbling here. The um, Anunurbe, I'm trying to say, as well as Thulvril and uh, even the U.S. government, the CIA. Um, so that's where all of this is birthed out of, is straight up out of Satanism. And like I said, this was handed down from the fallen angels. There is nothing new under the sun. And uh, lastly, if uh, you put that up, on the main screen for everybody, that way they can see it. If, uh, if you've not seen my film and you're watching this online, on the left-hand side, there's the QR code for the film if you would like to check it out. It's two hours and 32 minutes long, so I didn't leave any stone unturned. And you might have to watch it in uh, 30 or 40 minutes at a time, unless you can sit there and do two hours, two and a half hours. The right-hand side is the QR code for my YouTube channel where you can subscribe and follow me on there. I put out videos quite frequently, and I've done a whole series on the MK Ultra. There's probably close to about 19 videos on there right now that you can watch at your leisure if you want to go deeper on a lot of the stuff that I talk about. And with that said, I want to thank each and every one of y'all for coming out here. I hope y'all have a blessed day. God bless.